In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, please today, dear Lord, these times in which we live in, everything that's going on, Heavenly Father, touch as only you can touch. In Jesus' name, we pray for an anointing, Lord, an anointing. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. God bless you. May God keep you. This is our prayer. We are here for another Wednesday evening. We are still preaching out of the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, Praxis, the exploits of these anointed men of God, Acts of the Apostle. And we, in the last few weeks, in the book of, uh, excuse me, the chapter, the 12th chapter of the book of Acts, today we're going Acts, the 12th chapter, verses 18 through 25. We're going to finish the 12th chapter of the book of Acts. Uh, uh, taking our title for this evening's message, but the word of God grew and multiplied. But the word of God grew and multiplied out of the 24th verse of the 12th chapter of the book of Acts. This, this fledgling church, this young church, this baby church, going through all types of trials and tribulation, but they were they had the power of the Holy Ghost in them. Hallelujah. If you look at the 10th chapter, verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. If that's not enough for you, in verse 45, and those of circumcision who believed were astonished and many came with Peter because of the gift of the Holy Spirit had poured out onto the Gentiles as well. And if that's still not enough for you, verse 47, can anyone forbid water that he should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we? That's what the world needs now. That's what our country needs now. That's what our state needs now. That's what all of our cities and hamlets and counties uh, and townships in America need now. They need people who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, I was at the gas station and some young men came up and they had us, they were wearing a certain color scheme. They had all that color on. It was the color of the car, everything in the car. And what it was is they went and asked another young man whose car was ahead of me. They were asking him what neighborhood was he from and did they know who they were and he didn't have any business in their neighborhood. Excuse me, they didn't, they, I don't see that in those streets with their names on it anywhere. What gave them the right to want to jack this kid up because they didn't know who he was? Those kids need the Holy Ghost. When I left there, I prayed that they'll hear the word of the God will fall on them and, and that they'll hear the Holy Ghost that will be poured out on them and accept Jesus. If they don't know Jesus, I pray that they know Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their life and accept the power of the Holy Ghost. Not to just come to church and sing and clap a song and go on about their business, but the, the power of the Holy Ghost to take over who they were, have a cataclysmic change in their life. The power of the Holy Ghost. Just like in the book of Acts, in that 10th chapter, and where we are in 12th chapter, those people relied on the third person of the Godhead, that gift of the Holy Ghost. We need it in America today. Hate speech is on every hand. People are turning their, th their, their thumbs down at the church. They're turning their noses up at the church. They don't want to hear the church. They want to mix church and Islam. They want to mix church and Buddhism. They want to mix church and witchcraft. They want to mix church and the New Age movement. But brothers and sisters, we have been baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost. We walk at another level. We, uh, we are followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God They opened the door, they saw him, they were astonished, they mentioned to him 
they kept they keep silent when he declared to them the Lord had brought him out and he said go and go and tell these things to James and the brethren then the Bible says in verse 17 he departed and went to another place they didn't have time to rest on the laurels they didn't have time to go somewhere and get a cappuccino somewhere they didn't have time to go to a casino nowhere it was work to do just like today there's work to do there's things to do some of you preachers out there that haven't preached all year long you gotta go find a tree somewhere to preach in front of get somewhere and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ I know they won't let us open our prisons I know all these things are going on but if you're full of the fire and the Holy Ghost tell somebody tell somebody tell somebody about the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hallelujah verse 18 then as soon as it was day there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had happened to Peter. There was no small stir. There was a disturbance. There was a troshnosh. There was pandemonium. Pandemonium. Troshas. A stir. There was pandemonium because Peter was gone. Wouldn't it be something when we open our churches back up all over a small stir, a small pandemonium Thank you. 
people under the unction and following of the Holy Ghost is what was really in charge. And many people today need to understand that. They need to be aware that the Holy Ghost is in control. Hallelujah today. Stop thinking it's about you. Baby, it's not about you. It's about God. Hallelujah today. It's about God. Hallelujah. We'll say that one more time. It's not about you. It's about God, his son, our Lord and Savior, the only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. That's who it's about. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Back to the verse. They asked for peace because their country was supplied with food. Verse 20. Say verse 20. With food by their king's country. They asked for peace. They wanted peace. Even though to death. He had put the imprisoned Peter I mean, to kill Peter, but, but, but they wanted peace in the land. So verse 21, here it is. So on a set day, that meant that was a particular day. Some people believe that this was a Sunday. Hallelujah. Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave oration to them. Now, what people don't understand here is according to history that when Herod came out he was arrayed all in silver and he came out and the sunlight he was on a spiral and it came and he was arrayed and everybody looked at him look at me I'm Herod look at me I'm made of silver look at me I have the power to put these Christians to death Look at me, and you don't like what I'm doing. I have the power to put you to death. I'm Herod. Don't you see who I am? Look at me. I'm arrayed in the sun. I'm resplendent. I am outrageous in my, how I look. I mean, my royal apparel, according to verse 21, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. Hallelujah. And the people, verse 22, kept shouting, the voice of God and not a man, the voice of God and not a man. Now here it is, here it is. He sat on his throne. He was sitting and and he was at the, the on his throne and the rostrum was brought in. The rostrum and many of us know this as the bema, as the sacred desk as the judgment seat, as a tribunal chair, meaning when I sit at the rostrum, I can either raise my hand and you can live, or I can lower my hand and you can die. You got people like that. Today there's a certain country in the world today. This man talked against that particular president and they poisoned him and he's now in prison where he's been put in. They are just, they have already, they're counting on the days that he's going to totally lose his mind. Here in America, you better take heed to what I'm saying because we've got, we got good in this country. We've got people that want to shake their fists and get mad about this, that, and the other. But here it is. If, if the wrong person ever takes this over, if we ever lose the liberty of what we are, the, you'll be put in someplace and lose your mind. You'll be put someplace and be in prison. If you get somebody with a Herod type of mentality and you got people now with the Herod without being 
killed. He died without actually dying. What happened when the angel of the Lord hit him, he went through, he began the decomposition of his body. He didn't die. He didn't commit suicide. He didn't, but when the angel of the Lord hit him, a putrefaction began to break down in his body immediately. Can you imagine this? He's still alive. This is breakdown of the soft tissues and the gases and the liquid and the skin began to disintegrate. He's still alive. And all this began to happen to him. And what, what is known as an aerobic uh, 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 dying left him. Then uh, while he's still on the throne, while he's still dying from the outside, the maggots, and we call them, used to call them coffin flies. That was one of the reasons why flowers became so popular at funeral records because it kept the flies, it, 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 it kept control of the flies. The maggots began to eat him up. Then the putrefaction of him was going on. So he had two things going on in his body. He was dying as these maggots began to eat him as they're going through the upper dermis, the upper skin, the lower skin, the lower dermis, as they began to eat away at the protoplastic liquid in the body, as they began to eat away at the bone marrow, as they began to eat away at the bloodstream and the cell stream. While all that's going on, the putrefaction of his body was occurring at the same time. So when it was over with, the Bible says that King Herod died. He was eaten by the worms and he died. But with all of what he did, the word of God still, according to verse 24, multiplied. Now, that story ends right there. But if you look at verse 25, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they took with them John, whose surname was Mark. This rascal, this 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 spotted human being, he died on that throne. But thank God for our God, He sits on a throne up on high. He's been sitting there since creation began, and He's still on the on the throne. He hasn't had slept. The old folks used to say He hasn't slept since creation started. The Word of God is still multiplying. I know we live in times in America today where it does not look good for the modern day church. It doesn't look good for our country. But here it is. Keep on telling people about the word of God. The word of God will still multiply when all of us have passed away. When all of us have left the scene, the word of God will still multiply. There's still people that will hear the word of God and be blessed by the word of God, no matter how bad it gets, stay with the word of God. No matter how depressed you get, no matter how tore up from the floor you get, no matter how times are, still stand with the word of God. They can say that we're old-fashioned. They can say this is old fogeyism, but stay with the word of the true and the living God. There's power in the word of God. There's happiness in the word of God. There's power in the word of God. Thank God for the word of God. Just